Here we are, a beautiful clean night on the northern beaches of Sydney. It is the Sea Eagles and the Knights at either end of the NRL ladder coming into this one. Manly in second position, six wins and three losses, while the Knights, again, in their pink and blue jumpers, find themselves in 15th, a two and seven record as Kurt Gidley leads them out into enemy territory. They were here in round two last year and left on the wrong end of a 32-0 scoreline. Let's hope that isn't important of things to come tonight. No, they needed better effort than that and certainly than what they produced last week against Penrith in the second half, where they were close at half time, but ended up losing and giving up 16 points and scoring none. Jared Mullen has the ability to spark the Knights here at Brookvale Oval. And they, they desperately need something from their, their experience and class players. And out come the Seagulls. As we mentioned, Daly Cherry Emmons in our pre-game show. In rare form at the moment. One of the top two or three players in the competition. The form he's in along with Jared Hayne. They have again taken this 2014 season by the scruff of the neck. And he just about got them home last week against the Melbourne Storm down at Amy Park. It's a tremendous effort with still three big names in here and four and Jamie Lyon and Glenn Stewart missing as they are tonight. Yeah, great effort considering those three weren't there and they're not here again tonight, which does make you think that the Knights, if they can somehow produce an effort, could be a chance. Anthony Watmo, remarkable. He's played all nine games. He really, he probably shouldn't have. He's, he's, been, he's been knocked around, uh, especially over the last few weeks. I think he's been playing injured. And we'll see what sort of effort we get from Watmo tonight. And I think with those experienced players missing it just might be a special one the thoughts of the rugby league community were with the gasnia family over the past week after the passing of one of the all-time greats in reg gasnia tonight we'll pause once again to remember a man who will forever be a rugby league immortal Mark is obviously with us here at Brookvale tonight and to you Mark and all of the Gaznia family our sincerest condolences at Regis passing. Kurt Gidley looking for some inspiration tonight it has been tough times indeed in all manner of ways Time for the Newcastle Knights in the past week we'll see how they fare tonight Steve Matai gets us underway a shallow kickoff to no man's land almost and the Knights will have it on play number one at their own 20. James McManus in the two jump up but playing in the centres with Jake Mamo coming into the side at the withdrawal of Joey Leilua out with a hamstring strain suffered at training during the week. Kate Snowden playing it from Gidley comes across to David Fardlongo will work it up towards the 40. Confidence boosting solid start to the visitors here tonight. Adam Cuthbertson bringing it back to almost the halfway line on four plays. A kick early through the left boot of Mullen, who switches over to that left hand side to supply the kick. Stewart underneath his own uprights running towards Corbin Sims, who makes the tackle turn out from the manly loss. Matt Hyde charging hard and well tackled though by Jared Mullen. Ending on the right edge with Tyrone Roberts in his usual left edge position. And Justin Horro picked up into an awkward position there. He came down okay. Watmo turning it on. Now, Ballon waiting at dummy half. Cut to Little John. Here is Stewart to Matai off that left foot. Grabbed there by Mullen and also Gagai. And they'll have one more tackle. Goes deep. Little John to do the kicking. He wanted it as well, but Darius Boyd 
was back there, taking it on the full. Bringing it back at speed as well, where he stopped by Lawrence and also Little John. Well, he did bring it back with something, didn't he, Darius Boyd? Right to the heart of the manly chase there, met by Brenton Lawrence. Jake Mamo, who's on the field and with the ball now. There was talk just before kickoff that he was going to be ruled out, but picked up on a minor calf injury. But he's out there and playing outside. James McManus has moved into the centres in the absence of Joey Leilua. Aku Uwate coming in for a carry to bring it back almost to the 40. Has he got an issue here? Then he what, mate, putting his hand up. Does that left knee again heavily straps Uwate as he has done since coming back from the knee injury. And he is very ginger moving out to his position on the right wing. We'll keep an eye on him in the next couple of sets. But Anthony Watmo certainly thought there was something wrong in the tackle with Aquila Uwata. David Williams bringing it back to midfield and George Safua putting it down. It'll be a knock-on against Manly. A terrific chance for the Knights from just outside the Sea Eagles 20. Uh, Newcastle's losing feed, mate. You know, something that they've struggled with, Manly, and while they've got six wins on the board, their errors have let teams back into games. Their completion rate, you look at all the other 16 clubs, it's it's, it's down the bottom of the table. Jeff Tuvey has spoken about it on a number of occasions. It, it needs to get better. Great chance here for the Knights. Mate, no, you've got to get your head in the front. Come on. Last week against the Melbourne Storm, they completed 80%, but that was far and away their okay. best percentage for the season. They'd won three in a row before that. Couldn't complete more than three quarters of their sets in any of those three wins. See if this one, this mistake, cost them here. Goes through Gidley. Sims charging hard, stopped there by Ballon and also Lawrence, and they'll give away a All penalty. Not here getting is, out of is, the is, tackle come early come enough, back. according to Matt Jekin, the main referee tonight. Quick tap, Mullen, Roberts goes across to Robbie Rocco. Working on that left edge, he'll play it for Gidley. Goes to Snowden, he just gives up, there was nothing doing there. There were three or four of them waiting, so he just stopped. He'll play it. Eight metres away, you don't see that very often the front rower just stopping dead in his tracks. I, I don't think I've ever seen it. He just gave up. They go back to the left. Here's Roberts out the back. Boyd well marked and well handled there by Peter Hicku. The play at 12 away. Gidley Snowden again. This time he takes it all the way to the line. Offload Gidley to Mullen. It comes across to Sims. Back on the inside. Gagai can't hang on to it. Horro has it for Manley. And they're off the hook and playing in here at their own 20. Well, Manly covered that pretty easily, didn't they? They threw a little bit at them. Second man play, Darius Boyd. Well marked up by Peter Hiku. Kate Snow, yeah, he could have at least run into the Manly players and, and caused some sort of problems for the defence there, but just stopped. What no working it away, as we mentioned, the off-field issues. Been a huge distraction for Newcastle before this game, and see how that situation plays out. Had a sports group and the ownership players who haven't been paid, along with some of the coaching staff as well, in the football department. Kind of been easy getting ready for this game as Boyd will play it just outside the 20. Gag, dummy half. As to Uarte, looks to be okay. That jar to the knee perhaps that he took in the Watmo tackle. His right hand side, Gagai has monstered there, going backwards in the end in the tackle of Lawrence and also Horror. How far longer working it up to Starling. Watmo helping out. Used up four and haven't gone all that far down the field. Mullen goes behind Rocco. They had Roberts' number. He got the ball away though on the tackle of Hiku. Came back to Cuthbertson. Time Seagull himself, and he'll play it here at the halfway line. On the last, Mullen struggling, won't get the kick away. It's charged down, touched there by Snowden. Play on here for Matt Ballon. That happened a number of times last week. They're at Hunter Stadium against the Panthers, not getting their kick away in time. Yeah, too often 
for it not to be fixed up the following week. Jared Mullen uh, jammed over on that left-hand edge there. Not the perfect position to be in to put a kick in. Matai trying to get on the outside of Gagai there. Goes to Brett Stewart in there doing a bit of ball playing. Coming back to the short side, but hanging on to it. In fact, he didn't hang on to it. He lost it in the tackle. Well, just look, looked like he was trying to get a pass away as he went to ground. Some footwork. He got on the outside of Jared Mullen. And just as he tried to get the pass away, Corbin Sims came from came from the side and was able to knock it loose. Wait for the outcall, fellas. Right out. So here we come, Kurt. Check it in, mate. Kurt, all down. Out. The Knights win the scrum. James McManus, who was an origin player for New South Wales as recently as last year. South Wales team to be announced tomorrow at a luncheon at the Hilton Hotel in Sydney. As Rocco plays it, the Queensland team now known. Bobby Cherry Evans for Manly on the bench. Darius Boyd selected for Queensland and Australia before that, not that long ago. Really fire at club level for the Knights in 2014. Here's Cutherson playing it. Awkward ball here for Mullen. They've lost their way again at the back end of the tackle count. Mullen gets something going. Roberts, quick hands. McManus away to Mamo, who can really fly. Coming across, Brendan Lawrence, speaking of flying. The fastest front rower in history. Good job to get a piece of him. Mullen, kick it across the field. Uate underneath it. Mamo letting him take it. Gagai, a second kick. Rubbering, picked up though by Jack Littlejohn. He played here inside his own tent. It just showed how dangerous Jared Mullen can be. A little bit of speed there, and he skipped across the face of a couple of manly defenders to create something down that left side. And you're right, if it wasn't anyone else but Brenton Lawrence, Mamo's, Mamo's making his way to the try line. Desperate lunge from the manly front row to drag him down. Pudi Hiku with the ball. He's been very good in defence, Hiku, so far. A little spread from inside their own end. And Jeff Tooby in our pre-game show saying that they came here with the intention of playing a bit of footy tonight. He's good to his word is Cherry Evans down the middle of the field. Let go by Boyd for Billy Uate. Bring it back and be chopped down by Steve Nadai. What a tremendous tackle. A player who has been known for his solid contact throughout his career, but that was a classic. Sims inside the Newcastle foot. Uh, Longo is doing there. Josh Starling has himself as a regular starter in recent times for Jeff Toovey. As Boyd gets to dummy half, he goes to Cuthbertson, standing, offloading for Boyd. He had support there. He almost ducked away from Starling and also Lawrence. And they have one more. Plenty of numbers on the short side. Mullen is out there once again. He's playing on both sides of the field, but they are really stacking numbers on that left edge and trying to get something going between Mullen and Roberts. The offload from Cuthbertson to Boyd. Caused Manly a few issues there. Boyd almost ducking under the tackle of both front rowers. He was their best forward by a long way last weekend, Adam Cuthbertson. And there's the bump from Jamie Bure. It's almost as if Mullen has the general play kicking duties exclusively, and Tyrone Roberts has been told, you're not putting your foot on the ball because Mullen, the back end of every set, swapping over to the left-hand side to kick with his left foot. Cherry Evans. We'll wrap him up about 15 short of the halfway line. No score as yet on Toyota Monday night football as Starling was picked up and then went back to the in fact it was Lawrence and now Horro getting away the ball getting loose picked up here by Gagai this will be play on and the Knights coming back on the attack Mullen goes to Snowden and they counter quickly and spread it 
juggle there from Rocco. He's had to fight Robbie Rocco to get himself back into this starting side after being a regular starter at the beginning of the season. And dropped at the bench for a couple of weeks by Wayne Bennett. Now Cuthbertson, just outside the 10. Higley. Here's Roberts. Mullen. Boyd on the swoop. Giving it the gag on him. Matai is there again. Another beauty from the manly left centre. Uate. Matai and Gagai got up thinking about throwing punches at each other as now Roberts has it on the left edge. Wrapped up there by Cherry Evans. Idley at dummy half. Now Boyd grabbing knocked down there and knocked on. It went off Hiku's right hand to the ground and ruled to have been and knocked on. It would have been interesting had the ball come back out to the right hand side, Brandy because there were four of them, two on each side, who were more interested in having a bit of a wrestle. Yeah, and it was these two. It was Gagai and Matai, and then Nuate and George Tafua wandered across and got themselves involved in it. And again, they go down that left side, which they have liked doing, Newcastle, so far. Boyd Way putting back, the brothers. kick in and oh, almost boy, squeezing down. it through there. The split of okay. possession, heavily favouring Newcastle. <laughs> Here they are again. I'll end that tally right here. Manus playing. Morocco. Ballon, also Starling. Another penalty, a hand in the play. The ball, you could see it from Matt Ballon. He was desperate to slow down the play. The ball, and all the chance for two, and tap it and go. Snowden. Again, we've got a lot of venom in the run. We'll play it five metres out. Here's Gigli. Cutherson trying to do some light stepping in the middle of the field. Up there by Lawrence and also Starling. Out of the left edge. Good flat pass there for Snowden. Got across the line. Held up on hold him three, up. boys. And it was good work by Matt Ballon and also Daly Cherry Evans underneath the spin him and make sure he couldn't get the ball down. Yeah, because he bounced off the uh, the initial contact there, Kate Snowden, to find his way into the in-goal area. There's still plenty of tackles up their sleeves with far longer. Now Mullen goes out the back. Here's Gagai running at Matai, and Matai certainly having the better of this little battle. This left edge. Now you are taking from Dummy Hart, reaching out. He planted the ball down. I think Aquila has scored. I'll take a five, thanks, Jared. I've got to try. Check grounding, please. I think Matt Checkham was in a good spot there. He's gone with the try. Just to play the ball there from Gagai was quick enough to have Steve Matai. And there's no doubt it's it's on the line. He slammed it down with his hand. Just to confirm things. He thought he needed to push it forward a little bit. Obviously, he might have been a touch short when it first hit the ground. Then he rolled it forward with his wrist, but never left the, the ball never left his hands or his arm. It looked as though it came down on the on the line, a couple of angles there, and I don't think we'll see anything to dispute that fact. Green lights for the Newcastle Knights, despite everything that's happened the past week and the headlines they have created off the field they lead the sea eagles here on monday night footy it's through that man aquila uate he just caught steve matai on the hop a bit i think matai might have been interested in just pushing gagai that one too many times and uate recognized that and took off out of there and he's he might have copped a knock early in the half but he's, he's still a, a powerful athlete and that close to the line very difficult to hold up with nine sets Manley's error rate is hurting them at the moment they've had very little ball and certainly very little through to their fifth tackle it's only the second time this season that Manley have considered the first try in a game the Knights, despite being as poor as they were, especially in the second half against Penrith last week, they actually did get off to a fairly solid start in that game, and they've had off the back of so much possession here tonight. Plenty of tackles inside the 20. 16 zip. It's that tally at the moment, Newcastle's way. 
Now Bigley trying to fade it back. He struck it very nicely. It is a confidence building beginning here for the Newcastle Knights. They lead Manly six points to nil, Mark Gasnier. Yeah, they do. In that case, too strong you are. They look not the most intensive start from both teams. And Jeff Tuvey said before the game, he wants to pass the ball a little bit. The problem is they've got, tried to go Stand lateral twice. Here, Two times they come up with errors. On a team, on Newcastle, it looks like they've come here to dip the toe in the water and see how hot it is rather than just rip straight in. So not good. You've got to be careful when you do that. Also, a special shout-out to Claudia Watmau, the daughter of Anthony Watmau, who turns 14 today. He asked to say special mention and happy birthday on behalf of all of Fox Sports. There is Dad involved in a tackle here on Cade Snowden and also Jamie Bura helping out. Two down. The the play. David Farlonga running towards Ballon. The night six nothing over the Seagulls. Quiet here as a result at Brookvale. Here's a kick by Mullen. It was headed towards the sideline. Took a friendly bounce for Brett Stewart the end and he brings it back to play it inside his own 30 that was well struck by Mullen he's a beautiful kicker and passer of the ball at the top of his game when he's striking them well he's, he's pretty to watch there's no doubt about that he punched that low and Brett Stewart had to be well positioned to make sure it didn't find touch Ballon out of dummy half coming out to the left end where Dynamis Louie is out there now in those Euro orange boots as Watmo took it to the line. He had Bura coming with ball. him. It's going to be a penalty to Manly. Jamie Bura tackled without the ball. It might have been a close call there. Anthony Watmo taking it to the line and just popping one for his outside man. And it was Jamie Bura. They've judged him to be tackled before he got the ball. Well, it might have come off of Tyrone Roberts' hands. He might have got his hands on the ball. I think that's, that's, that's fair game there. The ball's there to be played at, and I think Roberts did it. Here is Louis. It might be a very tough call against the Knights. Manly inside the 20 at last after 18 minutes. Little John now out the back for Stewart. Quick hands to Matt High. See what he can do in attack against Dane Gagai after he's been he's pitching a shutout defensively against his opposite number. Justin Horro losing his footing and falling in front there of Adam Cuthbertson. Little John goes to Cherry Evans at the line, holding it up, giving it to Bura, trying to force his way across. Good defense by James McManus. Jamming in from his position in the centres. Little John goes to Stewart. A spread and some space. A ball back intended for Stewart there from Justin Horro. And it went forward. And, and over the Knights here, will Thanks have it. Hands on the next line, Manly. I think they, they had the numbers down the left oh, side there. Oh, Brett Stewart line. just putting Justin Horro into it into a little bit of space on the outside of the Newcastle defender who lunged and made a, a good tackle in the end. And Hold here, Eagles. Justin Horro right, thought that Stewart was there trailing on the inside and just Reggie, flicked Reggie. it out. Misguided flick pass, though. And here's the play in the replay box. Gagai coming in to make the tackle. An important one, too. Scare for the Knights, but they hang on. It's far long, though, to work it away. Back up towards the 40. Midway through the opening half, it's Mullen. Right hand side, Sims. With no Zabo Scott tonight taking his role. It's going to be a knock on against Newcastle. This is the area that really haunted them last week against the Penrith Panthers. Mistakes in their own half. Just about every time they made one, Penrith scored a try. Yeah, handling things a little bit better than Manly at the moment. Have a look at those numbers 44% of their sets company four out of nine for Manly who made another error at the back end of that set with Horro's flick pass but Corbin Sims error will provide Manly with great position to start their set Manly win the scrum and it's Cherry Evans who goes wide immediately to Hiku Hard at Tyrone Roberts, also Robbie Rocco. 
Stewart. Comes across to Bura. Pass Kate Snowden. It's cleaned up by the defence of Adam Cuthbertson. Now what no. Pass to him there. Just looking for a quick play the ball. Getting to his hands and his knees. And he supplies a fairly quick play the ball. Stewart goes to Bura. Back on the inside for Little John. The quick play the ball. Almost caught out the Knights. Ballon goes right to Cherry Evans. Gets away from Rocco, comes back to Ballon. Little John sums things up. It's a fend there on Corbin Sims. And it's Darren Mullen, in fact, who makes the tackle. One more for Manley. Cherry Evans. Good. The chip it towards the corner. Mano standing underneath it. Williams in the contest. It went back to Peter Heku. Don't know that he Knock got on, the ball down. In fact, he knocked it on. You go to the, well, nice you kick go to from 30, Cherry you go Evans. Good set from Manley. Right Nearly yeah. came up okay. with points at the end of it. Jake Mamo. Zero! Just able to do enough along with some assistance from James McManus to, to deny Manly a chance. There's the kick. David Williams got a hand with Peter Hiku takes it. And just in his effort to get it down while it just falls into the, the Newcastle arms. Chris Houston is out there and gets rocked with his first carry. Jarring shot by the middle third defenders for Manly. Jason King is also out there now in 17 for the home side. And Mullen just takes it out of play. They'll play field position footy and make the Sea Eagles work it away again from a scrum inside their own 20. He's happy to slow things down after being under a little bit of pressure. Let's give his, his teammates a breather. And the way they're travelling, Manly, I'd, I'd be I'd be confident that I could force an error out of the Sea Eagles, who are still batting well below 50% completion rate. Jerry Evans feeds the scrum, and Manly have it. It's Anthony Watmo, who fast play the ball at the other end of the field, almost got something going for the Sea Eagles. They'll get something here. The Knights penalised and up there, mate. Up there. They will find the line just outside their own 20. Jack Little John and the sixth jumper again tonight with Kieran Foran still a couple of weeks away Thanks, potentially. Sir. Be back as soon as their next game. Jamie Lyon around about the same. Ben Stewart perhaps a month or so still away. Ballon goes to Little John. Here is Watmo. Gives it to Horro. Caught it between his knees. That's clever. And now Ballon gets it going in the right direction. And Cherry Evans uh, passing Louis King, colliding there with Kurt Gidley jumping out. Some good contact and almost forcing a mistake as Louis charging hard and stopped there by Sims. 32 away from the Newcastle line. Play five for Stewart. Yeah, Horro coming with him. Gag guy under pressure, but he did very well to hit and stick in the tackle. Here's the last. Ballon. Go back to the short side. Stewart sees a gap. He closed quickly, and he, like Horro before him, just fires it wildly out the back. And went forward straight to Corbin Sims. Not as clinical as they'd like it to be. It looks like. It's going to be one of those games that uh, it's there to be won by either side was. Brett Stewart, good tackle from Chris Houston as Stewart, I thought. With your foot. And I, I think he did too. Looked like he had some space in behind to play the ball there. Good effort from Houston to close it down. Willie Mason is also out there now for Wayne Bennett and the Knights. Turning up and missing... Last week's effort against the Panthers. They bring it back out towards the 30. A good carry right there. This tonight is just the third time this season that Manly has been held scoreless in the opening 20 minutes of the game as they go the Knights through Boyd away to McManus. And the other two games where they well were held scoreless, they were beaten. So now this one turns out as Sims. In and away, a gypsy doodle and gives it away to Gag Guy, who sort of light stepping himself. Not quite Roger to Avasa Sheck stuff, but not bad all the same as Mullen puts it in the air. 
Goes down towards the third, going back. He didn't get anywhere near it. George, he's under pressure now. He'll ground the ball in the tackle of Uate, or did he? He brings it back. And Matt Jackin is happy that there was no grounding by Tafua. Well, he certainly hit the ground on the side that, that he was carrying the ball. Whether the ball touched it or not, he's a, giving him the benefit of the doubt. A towering punt from Jared Mullen. George Tafua, who was standing at the back with Brett Stewart out on the wing. We had no chance to get to it. Watch it again as Williams goes straight through them. Pouring downfield, running towards Boyd, who wraps him up 45 metres out from the Newcastle line. He plays it quickly. Jerry Evans goes to the line himself. With no fullback, he kicks. Williams is chasing. Uwate is there, and he won't be able to bring it back. He came down. On the goal line, that will be a dropout. Yeah, great chip, great chase there from Manly. Jerry Evans realising that there was no fullback in play. Darius Boyd had made the tackle. And it was a nice ball from Anthony Watmay that got things going for Manly. David Williams into the hole. And then Jerry Evans summed things up. Tough chase for David Williams, who'd just run 50 metres. And then a great low tackle from George Tafua. So cut. Uate down inside yeah. in goal area. Oh, do you think it's funny? The Knights are under pressure, and of course, <laughs> this is the final game of the women in league round in round 10. You can go to the nrl.com slash women in league to find out more Stay about it. So many ladies here tonight to watch the Sea Eagles, all the Knights go around. Plenty of, plenty of Newcastle supporters again coming down. Sid Fogg's buses. The Knights might have cash flow problems. I don't imagine Sid Fogg has ever had a cash flow issue. He's done very well out of rugby league and the Knights coming into the Premiership in 1988. Plenty of busloads full of people down into the Sydney area to watch Newcastle play. Now King. Player 35 out from the Newcastle line. Mandy is the half hour mark approach is still looking for their first points of the game. Jason King taking it all the way to Kurt Gidley, swings it to Cherry Evans, comes back across to Horro. This time he hangs on to it. He'll play it here. Ballon gets to dummy half. Play five, a juggle from Motmo. Quick ball for Louis, thinking about an offload, but hanging on to it. And the Knights up inside right, the mate, 10. Take your, your time. There's no quick tap here. You can come back. Louis looking to pass the ball back to Anthony Watmo, who had given it to him. Yeah. Yeah. There was a Newcastle oh, player holding Watmo back. Line, back. I thought that might have been the penalty, but they've been penalised for offside inside the 10 to start this set. Here's Barron. Going to Cherry Evans. Bura running the crash line. Couldn't hang on to it. An early let off there in the tackle count from the Sea Eagles, and the Knights continue to keep their line intact as Mamo tries to duck away from the tackle. Right at his own 20. Here's Boyd trying to do likewise to beat the markers, but Louis and Ballon are there to wrap him up, and things just not chilling for the Sea Eagles with the ball. No, just not clicking, but it looked like Cherry Evans had done enough then to get Jamie Bure into some space. I, I think it was just a. A hand that came flicking across the front of Bura to knock that ball, make contact with it, and popped up into the hands of Kirk Gidley. Mason. And Roberts doing some kicking this time from dummy half, and he almost called out the Wolfman, David Williams, who was going to play it, but then thought better of it. And it will be Manley's ball from just outside their own 20. This is a very unmanly-like performance so far, Mark. Very much so, was They normally play really tough, and then they play pretty. Tonight, they're trying to play pretty without playing tough. Look, they're only 6 from 13, the completion rate, 44% possession. Absolutely inviting Newcastle into the game. Just on both, Scott couldn't play tonight, strained abdominal. Tell me, if he is selected, though, he will be OK for origin. Wait and see what Laurie Daly comes up with tomorrow when the New South Wales team is announced. Wretched run into this first game of the series with injury suspension, off field problems as well. Game one. 
Suncorp Stadium, no less, as Mura comes away to the right-hand side. Hiku, well rounded up. The defence has been strong the Knights tonight as McManus wrapped up his home right there, and now Mura. Well, their edge defence has been outstanding on this side of the field and on the side where McManus is patrolling. Little John coming away to Horro. Top down there by Mullen, allowed to get up and it's play on. Louis bends away from Gagai, proving to be a real handful. But Armas Louis is getting a round of applause from the locals as a result. Cherry Evans trying to get away from Mason, was able to do that. So out there now is Clydesdale, he couldn't wrap him up. Bura is taken to ground there by Tyrone Roberts, and now we have one more. Last minute decision there by Cherry Evans to run to the short side and put a kick in. And got Boyd pegged inside his own 20, but still lack of rhythm about the manly attack again in that last set of six. I guess we're surprised with it because we saw them play so well against Melbourne last week without Jamie Lyon, without Kieran Foran, without Glenn Stewart, but it has to catch up with them somewhere. And if you're going to make this the amount of errors that they've made in the opening half an hour of the game, well, it, it, it can be a, a tough slog for them. Mason playing. And it's Mullen to put it up once again. Bombing over towards George Defour again, and for a second time, he didn't want to know about it. You are, Tay. He had a play at the ball and forced Stewart to knock it dead. Well, George was that far from the ball that really he, he couldn't have a go at it. He can't get himself into position. It was another towering kick and an awkward one from Jared Mullen. And Brett Stewart, he's hoping that was going dead on its own, but needed to make a play at it. Been a real weekend of players in the back three of teams. The Roosters had an awful night Stay under the high ball. Stay behind, I'm not behind the line. In Townsville on Saturday night on a losing effort. And tonight, George Tafua 0 for 2. Taking towards his wing, David Williams is usually the target. It seems he certainly was from Melbourne last week. We'll see if he gets to work out at some stage under a few bombs as Mason plays. Now Rocker towards Ballon and Brendan Lawrence who only just held on with his effort in the tackle. Gidley turning it back on the inside. A chance now for Joseph Tumpany who was just out there doing pretty well. The back rower going close to getting across the line for their second try. Lionsdale spinning it. It goes through Mullen. Back over to Roberts. Shows it to Mason. Then Grubbers. Cherry Evans. An amazing pickup. And he had the presence of mind to hit the turf and bounce up and pick up 10 or 15 metres. Tremendous. Effort. Yeah, great reaction there from Cherry Evans. Not a bad kick from Tyrone Roberts, and he, he did it right on the defensive line. Brought Manley right up to him, and I guess that's where Cherry Evans he hedged his bets a bit. John finds Horro. Jared Mullen again, as we said, their edge defence has been outstanding. Just Roberts gets right to the line. Cherry Evans, great pickup in the replay box. Now Lawrence back at the halfway line. Cherry Evans across to Bura. Up there by Rocco and also Clydesdale. Here is the last. It's little John to put it up. Kick it all that far down the field. The Knights might leave it. In fact, I'll take it through Tyrone Roberts. An ineffective, ineffective kick by the Seagulls to end that set of six and go back to Newcastle in far easier circumstances than the Knights perhaps thought was coming up. A disappointing finish, not a great set. Not the way you want to, want to finish it. With a poor kick, easy take for Tyrone Roberts and Newcastle back in the Manly Territory. It's Houston playing the ball. Clydesdale goes to Mason. Cherry Evans, he wasn't at marker and he certainly wasn't back to 10. A part to play there in the tackle. Here's the last. Roberts putting it up. See how his kick goes. It goes towards Defua once again. Oh, he never looked like getting it, did he? He came towards the ball and somehow they've ruled it's gone through his hands and backwards. And it's play on for Manly, but 
What do you he, think of that call? He I, was a million to one. I thought it was a knock-on for your life. Absolutely it was a knock-on. How did they call that a knock-back? I, I think George would be better off allowing it to bounce. Oh, forget the Wolfman. I'll just keep kicking it to George at the moment. No question about that. His last three efforts. We've escaped scathe off the back of those kicks to this point, but keep letting them bounce and missing them the way they have. The drama at some stage. Carried by Aki Uwate, but boy, he wore a shot. Jason King, and he's slowly off the ground as well, and again, limping that left knee as he gets back out towards the right wing. But Max. Four minutes remaining for the break. And just the one try in the game. Good by Aquila Uwate. He's still limping back out, as you can see, towards his position. Oh, the chase coming up in a moment if they get to the back end of this set. If he bombs away again, you'd imagine. Rocco to play it. Clydesdale looking. Mullen wants it. And as it expects, he kicks it back out towards Tafua. Iwate. Iwate tapped it backwards. Stewart picked it up. It's play on. Stewart dummies. Tuppany is there. And he rounds him up in a good thing as well. That eye was screaming for the ball. And he had some big metres in front of him. Well, they've been saved a couple of times by the reaction of their, their class players. Cherry Evans on a grubber kick. Brett Stewart on a bouncing ball there. Nice hands from Cherry Evans out to Hiku. Gets He's away from Rocco. Still running is Hiku. Fends away from Gidley. And then Cherry Evans, a little hesitant, paid a price because Rocco crunched him from behind. And Lawrence. Left foot and right foot step, and he carries them a long way as well. 20 out from the Newcastle line. Play five. Little John goes to Stewart. Plenty of numbers there, though, for Newcastle. And Stewart, his amazing try scoring record here at Brookvale, can't find a way through. Little John kicks, not as wide as he would have liked. Bura taps it back. Cherry Evans kicks again. He was chopped down in trying to chase through. Boyd gets away from Bell and brings it back. It's going to be play on for the Newcastle Knights. The Manly fans were screaming that Cherry Evans was taken out of it. After kicking the ball, as Darius Boyd looked very uncertain on his feet. We got it back into the, into the field of play, which was important. Cherry Evans. The double kick almost providing something, but chopped down. Now guys come from the other side of the field to take some of the workload. There is Mason. Good tackle there by Jamie Bura. Mason was up in the air. Perpendicular for a moment. As Mullen will kick from inside the 40. Hurried one, but a good strike. And getting back, well, can you believe that? George Tafua, after everything we've seen in the last 10 minutes, makes a great running catch going back over his shoulder. Not hard to know where that one was going to land, but I, I, I keep throwing up the curly ones to George. Here he is. The floaters. Coming down the narrow side and playing it here back at the halfway line. It was a super tape. Hasn't got near anything else. Lawrence playing at the bell. Here's Jason King spinning in the tackle. And through in support was Matt Ballon. King just couldn't get the right arm free in time. Little John goes wide. Matt Eye skips past Gagai. The first mistake he's made in defence. Tafua tries to keep it alive, but Gagai has recovered. The ball back on the inside looks forward anyway from Tafua. Gagai did very well after being beaten by Matt Eye to come up with possession. Yeah, it's a great left foot from Steve Matt. I saw Gagai rushing in from the outside there. Just put the left foot step on him to. Creates some room for himself and George to throw down this left side, but as you said, was recovered terrifically to hunt the ball down. Tyrone Roberts working beyond his 30. 6 0 the scoreline, and the last 10 times Manley has been held to nil at the break, they've lost all 10. What no diving in around the legs of Joseph Tump and Mullen. With the clearing kick towards the corner of the field. 
It'll bounce dead, and that will do us for the opening 40 here at Brookvale Oval. Lots to talk about for both coaches. A variety of reasons. It's the Knights on top, 6-0 over the Sea Eagles. We'll take a break. Come back in a moment with Andy Raymond. Thank you, Matty. As the Newcastle Knights head back out here, leading six points to nil. Just the one try in the game. It came pretty early as well with Billy Iwate scoring close range off the back of repeat sets. Manly never really looked like scoring. Crossed the line once and were held up, but that's as close as they got. <coughs> See if they can rectify things. We told you that stat before half time. Previous 10 occasions, they've been held to nil at the break. And lost all 10. A bit of work to do right here, as we saw the Melbourne Storm last week. We know they're capable despite the players who are missing. In the second half last week, their completion rate tonight in the first half was awful at 11 out of 20. Last week against Melbourne in the second half, they were 16 from 16. They'll need something like that to get themselves out of trouble here this evening. Yeah, they were brilliant last week. Goal kicking probably cost them. We haven't needed to see that yet. I don't know whether Steve Maddow will have the job or not, but they need to get across the line first. Justin Horro has been busy. They've aimed plenty of their attack down the left side. And Horro has uh, poked his head through a couple of times, just unable to get the ball any of, any of his support play. All right, Adam, how are you, mate? You in position? Yes, I'm in position. Matthew. Right, hang on. All right, you. Yeah. Referees are Go okay. Behind. We're okay. <laughs> and it's play on here on Toyota Monday Night Football. The Sea Eagles to work it off their own line. Here is Brandon Lawrence hitting a good tackle. Top was Joseph Tuppany. Downstairs was Kurt Kitt. And yet they're playing as a running back rower at the moment with Adam Clydesdale off the bench and onto the field looking out for the dummy half duties. Watmo, a carry and an offload. Cherry Evans can't pick it up cleanly. And it's going to be a knock on, no, knocked it on the kick against back. Daly Cherry Evans and Manly immediately under pressure. Well, again, another error. We just spoke about the, the amount of errors they made in that opening 40 minutes and, and could not continue to do that and stay in the game. They give the Newcastle Knights a terrific chance. Not long after returning, there's the little knock on from Cherry Evans. Anthony Watmo just didn't have anyone pushing forward with him. Got the ball away. And well within his right to pass and expect someone to be there to catch it. It's Darius Boyd coming back on the inside here for James McManus. The Knights will set themselves from attacking raid just outside the Manly 20. Blindsdale goes across to Rocco. Stopped there by Watmo and also Ballon. Roberts is out there on the right, so is Mullen at the back. They go instead to the first option, which was Willie Mason. They'll just punch it forward, play a 10 away in front of the uprights. Here's Gidley now. Mullen goes wide and cuts out Darius Boyd. Gagai, though, runs into Horro and also Little John. Isn't going anywhere on that play. Now House Mullen to Tarpany, who tries to hit and spin did a pretty good job as well it was stopped by king and also ballon the last here for the knights mullen rubbering one played backwards by cherry evans no drama with that one and they've held on after the early mistake by the halfback and will play it a couple of meters away he's cool under pressure isn't he cherry evans the grubber kick almost beat him he just got his hands to it was able to clean it up comfortably even though he was under pressure Bureau to work it away, playing a 25 out from his own line. Ballon to to Jason King. Still working off the bench after missing so much football in the last 18 months. Kick is a good one. Iwato. Far from 100%. If you saw that a couple of times in the first half where he came away from tackles, limping. A full gallop though, he's still a sight to be holding. Something to stop as well. 
Darius Boyd. Play it for Ross. Is housed. Tackle around the legs there by Anthony Watmo. Company this Kiwi gets a chance. Linked up with the Knights. Playing the NYC last year, the national youth competition as Mullen kicks out towards the corner it goes. End up here by Brett Stewart. Again, Manly have to work it away from their own 20. Matter coming across to Tafua. Just a real lack of energy about the Sea Eagles at the moment. Just slowly getting back on side most of the forwards. Jamie Lyon, as we said, will probably be on deck. Round 11. Next clash, which is a couple of weeks away. They have the bye next week. Oh. The clearing kick is inside the 20. An absolute beauty. Was it out on the full? Change yes, over. it was. Change over. Change over. Out in the full, Cherry Evans. It, I thought it was a, a piece of magic from him. A towering kick. It looked okay. Oh, boy. Did that touch the turf just inside the line on the point of the ball? Well, it was tight. It was tight. Not easy to tell for the touch judge as he ran along the sideline there. Now the Knights, it's a huge call because the Knights have it now 10 metres out. Opposed to Manley screaming down the field for a quick tap off of 40-20. Gidley off the right foot and punching back into the hole there between Bura and Cherry Evans. Here's Mason. The distributing. Mullen goes wide to kick by. Good tackle, Steve Maddai. How many Steve classic Maddai. legs tackles he made in this game on Dane Gagai? It's been a great Steve battle on that side of the field. Steve Maddai called offside. That might have been one we could have gone upstairs to have a look at. I know we saw a quick replay then. You see a big call, massive turnaround. Now, Houston playing it. Dunny going himself, nothing doing there for Clydesdale. He's still fighting hard at the death in the Horro tackle. Mullen no gets to Dummy Hart. To the way to Tarpany. Stopped there by Jason King and others. Roberts goes to Gidley. Ball back on the inside here for Mason. Bura is around the legs. A fast play. The ball, though. Clydesdale got there. Rocco bounced off one. Tried to dig for the line, but they got a body in front of him just in time. It was Brendan Lawrence, in fact. Goes back to Roberts. He'll grub her. It's well weighted. Stewart waiting for it. Has to take it dead. Gagai was on the scene with a chance to make a play. And Manly, the pressure will remain on their defensive line. Here's the 40 20 from Daly Cherry Evans. Kicked well within his 40. No, I'm happy that that's hit the line. Just on the edge of the line. And now, as we rejoin the play, Manly from the goal line dropout have managed to find the sideline themselves. Yes, Steve Maddai punching one low. Beats the Newcastle player over the sideline. I did, mate. I did. The Knights had their backs turned. Nobody was ready. And then coming late on the scene, Jake Mamo didn't have a play. Well, that's clever play from Steve Maddai. Just got on with it quickly, wasting no time, catching the Knights. Come together, second clock, hop in. Unaware. We saw a beauty from Chris Sando the other day. The Eagles and the Dragons. and That travelled 11 metres. That's how, that's how tight that one was. That was absolutely brilliant. A little John goes to Steve Maddow. He is running now. Get away to Fua reaching behind him though has knocked it on and the errors just keep mounting up for the Sea Eagles. He thought he created a bit of space there for George to Fua and skipped on the outside of Gagai, but Gagai stayed with him. There's their beginning of the, the second half, one from four. And after the the clever play to drop kick it into touch and Get his side back the ball. He's come up with an error for the Eagles to put them under pressure again. Only one from four in the second half and 12 from 24 overall. Exactly 50% for the game. So one of the no trail by 
Fair bit more than just six points. Austin playing. Company. Looked lively, hasn't he? Chance last week against the Panthers, but showing what he can do here tonight at Brookvale. Good footwork at the line as Mason playing at 25 metres out. Lines down at dummy half goes to Gidley, bends away from Horro. Couldn't beat Little John though. That was a good effort by the Manly 5-8. The tackle he had to make. Mullen kicks to the corner. Williams standing underneath it. Didn't reach him, in fact. But Mattis played it, play at it, tapped it backwards. And it went through the hands. Comes to Mason, standing in the tackle. Still, they keep it alive. Tapani, Mamo has the ball. On into Manly. Knocked on. Gone. Racing in was David Williams. And I'll say the ball left scrum, mate, Mamo's scrum. hands and went no, no. forward into Williams. No, no, it was touched. It was six to go at the contest, so it's a scrum now, boys. Well, they were able to keep the ball alive. Did it hit a manly arm, mate. When well, yeah. it looked unlikely there, manly Newcastle, and almost caused some problems. And there's the drop ball from Jake Mamo into David Williams. Good call by the referees. Just pinging back and forth in the corner for a moment Let's there go, between seconds. Rocco Put in two hand seconds, and Elvis. others. Hold. Hold, Chris, hold. Manly hang on. Nine and a half gone in the second half. And no change to our half-time scoreline as Tafua plays it. Lawrence working it forward. There's a handful. It was right there. Cherry Evans. Showing it, trying to get away from Roberts and just about succeeding in doing that as well. Just be happy to get through a set and get to their kick at the moment as Lawrence again backing up his earlier carry. Great stuff from the front row. Al Lewis goes to Little John. Stewart and away on Mullen. Matai was coming back on the inside, lost his footing. Got back in time though to clean up. In fact, no, the Knights have it. Dane Gagai works it away, and again, man, we make a mistake. Well, Steve Maddai slipped over before the, the pass was thrown. And then Brett Stewart, thinking he was coming back on the inside, just popped the ball, and he couldn't clean it up. Jared Mullen was able to do that for the Knights. Nice run by Cuthbertson, who will play it just inside the Manly 30. Nice. Running at Ballard, locking him up in a three-man tackle, and here's the last. Who do you kick to? Tafua or Williams? Goes across to Roberts. He'll chip it in behind them. Pressure on Williams to keep it in the field of play. Oh, he's lost the ball. Rocco's ended up with it, and this might be a gift for Newcastle. Okay. Try no, no try, mate. Just let's check grounding. Make sure he wasn't held. It's zero, mate. Okay. So what the re on-field referees are saying that. The player that made the tackle on David Williams has hit the ball and knocked it forward. Let's just watch the kick from Tyrone Roberts. You said Williams to Fua, toss a coin. They go along the ground, not in the air. David Williams does a good job to back his way into the field of play. And it's hard to see exactly how that ball comes free, but I'm assuming that the referees think that McManus must have touched the ball and knocked it forward into Robbie Rocco. Perhaps off the forearm or the elbow of McManus to force the ball away from Williams. Has it there. And then again, that angle there suggests maybe just the contact with Williams forced the ball loose and perhaps McManus didn't touch it. We don't know. And this, this might this be our best be angle. Best well, what do you think? <laughs> well, I, unless Williams has grounded that football, I, I'd, I'd have to give this a try because I, I think he knocks his arm and not his... Let's see if he gets to the ground. No, I don't think he does. He goes off either knee of Rocco. Well, this is it. This is the angle that's going to tell us. Maybe just the, the upper arm, the back of the upper arm there. Given that the on-field decision was no try, mm. 
I couldn't say conclusively that it didn't touch James McManus. I'm going to say it'll be red lights. Yeah, well, I, I think Williams grounds the ball. And from that angle, I, I think the ball touches the grass right now. As he pulled his arm up, it came across the grass. And I would say that would be enough to rule that that's, that ball's been grounded and it doesn't matter what happens after that. If he was scoring a try at the other end, it would have been forced for a try, so no doubt about it. That I, know he, I know he wasn't meaning to ground it, but there's no doubt the ball touched the grass before it came free. And either way, red lights, we're thinking, which is what we get from First our... First knock-ons by Manly in the end goal, and then a knock-on from Newcastle. Jared it's a goal Maxwell line, Rebel, boys. and Henry Perinara tonight, and they've said that it was knocked on he said, he cleared that it was off the ground. by Manly. He which can only be David Williams. He was the only manly player that touched the ball. So, well, where did the knock on come from Williams? Did, it, did he lose the ball into James McManus? Couldn't make a case for that. Either way, going to be a dropout mm. had it been four. So, same result and rock out it is. Bring it back. And almost getting through the line. Jamie Bura. Good tackle in the end. Sims throwing his body at the line. Stopped there by Dynamis Louis. Now here is Cuthbertson. Jesse Sonny Lefayor is also out there now and working feverishly in that middle of the field for Manley. Mullen looking one way, coming back the other. Not much happening for him there on either side. We'll play it after four. Here's Farlongo. He'll just take it forward as you would expect. Offload from the front rower. The Knights have one left. Mullen rubbering. It's well weighted. A chip sitting up for George Tafua. He loses it. Uate has it. He might have a second try. Mate, we've got a try. We're on zero. Just check grounding. Thanks, mate. Well, just sheer weight of possession and where the game's being played, you would think would see Aquila Uate come up with his second try. The Jared Mullen kick couldn't be cleaned up. Horro rushes up. All the Newcastle players on the outside are good. Gagai has a play at it. George Tafua, does he get a hand to it, Gagai? I think he just has a swipe. It misses. Tafua can't clean it up. We know how tough that guy is to stop. When he's so close to the line. It all looks okay. Gagai didn't get a touch. A quick look is all they need. It is a try for Newcastle. And it's a double figure lead. Just over 27 minutes remaining. 10 points to nil. The kick still to come. And Aku Yuate again, the benefactor of a manly mistake. Well, their ball control is horrendous. It's horrendous. Now, they were 11 from 20 coming into the, sec the start of the second half. They are 1 from 7 to start the second half. The game has been played basically inside the 30-metre area. A couple of line dropouts. They've been able to force the Newcastle Knights. And they haven't looked flashy, but they are hanging onto the ball. And they're making Manly do the defence. And in the end, you just can't keep defending your own line and, and continually turn away attacking raids. Roberts from out wide. It looks like hooking back, but it stays out to the right-hand side. 10-0 it is, and it is very, very quiet, Mark Gasney, here at Brookvale. It is very quiet, absolutely. And I'm not sure whether it's because of the scoreline or because of the crowd can't believe how poor they're playing. Look, the try off the drop ball and a try from dummy half. Newcastle have been far from putting themselves, but as Bernie said, 15 errors, not good enough. You get the feeling down here, if Manly can put together a good 5-10 to 10 minute period, they'll still win this game. Some good defence here, and when Manly try to get themselves back into a contest, they usually do it through a defensive ambush just like this in the opposition 20. Fairly stern words would have been said behind the line while they waited for the conversion attempts. See if they can muster here. Darius Boyd taking a carry 
late in the tackle count. All plays gone. Harlan to go down to the last to get the clearing kick in. Cuthbertson will play it. Clive's done. Two Mullen from inside the 40. Looking over as he made contact. It goes down to Williams. He'll work it away off his own line. Bringing it back. It was a good effort by Newcastle to respond to the challenge defensively from Manly. It was a good set. He got out near the 40 out of Cuthbertson to play the ball on the fifth. And Jared Mullen just drilled it down the centre of the field. Got the bounce. Bringing it out in their own half. Good run from Tafua. Back to Justin Horro. Good tackle, though, by Jared Mullen. Some tremendous legs tackles here tonight. Sonny Lafayette taking it back across the halfway line. On the last for Manley. It goes to Cherry Evans. He puts it up. Backing back is Aquila Uate. And like George Tafua before him. He was long, long odds to catch that while he was on the back pedal. That's a great kick from Cherry Evans because too often we see halfbacks just dink it into the corner and try and play percentages. That time he threw it up, he knew that they need a result. They need something special. They need the ball. They need to force some errors. And what better way than to throw it up and not just kick it down the throat of one of the back three, but make him move to the football. Well, now there's some atmosphere here at Brookvale. The locals are restless. They want something. They want a result right here. Little John feeding the scrum. Bure goes to Maddox. And the hand of the ball, that's the first question. Stewart it is. Taking it towards the corner. And Mamo and also McManus wrap him up. Five away. To Hiku. What's happening there in the tackle of Corbin Sims. And he'll play at 10 metres out. Ballon with a long left-hand side set. Cherry Evans goes deep. Little John, Matai, quick hands. Tafua for the corner. George diving and scoring it looked like. Jared, on tackle four, mate. We have tried. Please take surrounding touch and goal. Thanks, mate. Well, there's not many that can knock George Tafua over the sideline. When he's got a head of steam up. Great pass from Steve Matai. Early ball. George Tafua gets it down in the corner. He took the shot there from Gagai. Absorbed the force and then the presence of mind just to make sure he got the ball. Inside that touching goal line. Terrific set play from Manly. Ballon out of dummy half. They've run one. Well, clinically... They've struggled with that, their execution in their set play so far tonight. But Steve Maddow, I didn't overplay his hand. Nice quick ball to the, the power winger. It was a nice line run by Brendan Lawrence, which attracted the attention of Jared Mullen. He was hedging his bets, and with his body weight going inside, it opened up some space, and the men on his outside had to all come in, and in the end, it was the overlap for George Defua to get Manly on the board. It took almost an hour. Who'd have thought that coming here to Brookvale tonight? And I hits it well enough, but it hooks away. It'll stay at 10 points to four. That might spark them into action now, Mark. Well, the crowd certainly hopes so it was, I can tell you that. They're starting to get a bit vocal now. But look, that's only the second set piece they have executed, and it's resulted in a try. If they can complete their next five sets, put some pressure back on Newcastle, and get remotely down in that half, they'll go on and win this match, Manly. Stay behind! Often call from the man who tipped the Newcastle Knights, and at the moment, is looking like a genius. Mark Gasly. Josh Starling. Bring it back out. This would be remarkable if Manly could come from behind to pull off an escape here, given they have completed less than 50% of their sets of six at the moment. Little John playing it inside the 40. Matt I down the short side as well. Hausman was there to wrap him up. Now, 
take it away from the sidelines. Good meters. The last three plays, a chance to put more pressure on the back three. Jerry Evans supplies it. The bomb again going towards Uate. Boy, I wasn't confident watching him go backwards. At least with the float of the ball that time coming back towards him as it came to the earth. He was able to make a much better attempt. Oh, it, was, it, was, it was a good take. That was a good take. Was that, you mentioned floating because it wasn't the end over end kick that are easy to judge. Calfordson. The Knights have been rock solid from their own end, working it away under pressure here tonight. Good effort once again. Boyd played in the tackle count, trying to use his speed to supply a quick play the ball and ease the pressure on the kickers as a result. Roberts got the ball from Mullen and one of his rare kicks here tonight picks out Brett Stewart on the full. He'll bring it back to the 30. But Manus comes up and shuts him down. It's good work once again by Newcastle just to get through the set into their kick. They can work it away from this end. Williams playing it for Ballard. Williams Bura stepping at the line, getting past Rocco, but not Cuthbertson. So it will fail. Good tackle there by James McManus. He's done a very good job, hasn't he? Filling in on the left edge for Joey Leilua. Little John up in his face as Chris Houston stops him quickly. And losing some momentum at the back end of the set as Cherry Evans bombs towards Uate once again. Matai is there just trying to be the spoiler and put Uate off as much as contest the ball. And Aquili did well. Well, Cherry Evans wanted to continue to test Aquila, but he's been up to the after the task on the last two, the pressure there too, Darius Boyd, jinking his way out to the 30. It's been the same in attack again. It's not, that has been the story of the season, but he's put his hand up, taking his carries. Little of set, back end of set in this second half to help the forwards out when he's had to. Gidley trying to play it quickly on the last. Mullen has some room and then Bananas one off the outside of the boot. He's always done that very well. And he finds the line and again it will slow things down and use up some seconds on the clock. You know, he's, he's made 15 hit ups Darius Boyd but I, I've rarely seen him on the edges and trying to create some problems for the edge defence for Manly. It's been carries from kicks or hit ups out of his own end and try and get a quick play the ball. Steve Maddai hurt himself flying through the air when he tried to put Aquila Uate off with the Cherry Evans bomb. Dynamis Louis playing it, Ballon. Now he worked it away from inside their 30. They come back out with this right edge, Hiku. Too many chances to show what he can do tonight. Cherry Evans has been setting the fail. Ballon points and just says, take it that way and take the tackle. Start. Tipping on the halfway line. We've got two plays left in this set. Come back to Vera. Out the back to Cherry Evans. McManus can't wrap him up. Cherry Evans fires a ball. Bounces up fortuitously for Stewart and then. Tom Simons is out there now in 18. Here's the last for Manley. Stewart down the short side. And I has to get rid of it. He can't. Dane Gagai pinched it. He's away. Little John chasing. He won't get to him. Gagai runs away. And Newcastle extend their lead. It has been a great battle on that side of the field between Gagai and Steve Matai, and that time they decided to run the, the ball on the fifth tackle down the short side. Brett Stewart, after linking with Tom Simons, goes down the short side. An awkward one for Matai, who never really had hold of the football, and then very cleverly, Dane Gagai just rips it out of his grasp and has the speed to go all the way. It might be tough for Manly now after giving their performance a... Well, an injection of life 
with the Tafua try, no one was going to stop that man once he got clear. It becomes pretty tough now. Newcastle 14-4 with a kick to come. It has been the pattern of the night, an error from Manly. And this one costing them. Good speed from Dane Gagine for much of the season. He and Leilua on either side of the field have been pretty much their best attacking option. Time is their only attacking options. We weren't going to track him down from behind, given a head start and 10 points the lead. A big kick coming up here for Kurt Gidley to make this two converted tries the difference. Just on a quarter of an hour remaining. Still plenty of time, quite obviously, for Manly, but they'll have to improve lengths. Good. Gidley asked to just bring the ball a little closer to the sideline by Matt Checkin. But he was just creeping in a little too close. Manly had been able to get through their last five sets leading up to that one, that error by Steve Maddai. Tough one to handle. Kurt Gidley trying to fade it back. Doesn't get the swing that he needs. It stays at 14 points to four. Don't forget, Thursday night on Sturlo, we'll head into the Queensland camp for a live interview with Maroons captain Cameron Smith. Also, George Burgess drops into the studio to talk all on things Rabbitohs. They've got their issues after what happened against Melbourne on Friday night. The biggest names, the best access in the NRL. Sturlo, Thursday night on Fox Sports Club at 7.30 p.m. The Knights, a handy double-figure lead once again. Jake Mamo to play it, 15 out from his own line. Hit David Farlongo. They have been all but perfect from this end of the field. Darius Boyd, again, play for, taking a carry. Take a as a result, and Manly unable to get off their line with any sort of speed. Allen, then the kick away again. No real pressure on him. The bounce down to George Tafua. And you get the impression from what we've seen so far that Newcastle could do that all night. Just work it off their line and get to their kick. It has been a, a repeating pattern, hasn't it? For the Knights, and Jared Mullen has been able to punch it into the corners. And on occasion, throw it up in the air and trouble the back three for Manly, in particular George Tafua in the opening 40 minutes. Yes, he could cut down again by James McManus. Albura spinning. Play five. Still inside their own 30. Gary Evans down the short side. That was a tough kick. He's able to hook it back. Darius Boyd will bring it back. And as a result of a really ineffective set there from Manly, the Knights have it back. Almost back at the halfway line on play number one. Here's Mullen. Seeing a bit of space between the markers and the A defender. Back to the halfway line. Houston. Oh, a chance Newcastle with a try here to perhaps put this one to bed. Here's Sims. Good carry. Oh, appealing for a high tackle. Matt Checken didn't right, think so, but at the death he says yes. There was some Thanks, contact Rick. up above the shoulders. You would think from pretty much right in front, just outside the 30, I would take the two. Kurt Gidley should be able to pilot this one through. A late call from Matt Checken. F. Tuvi. Tough gig tonight for Tuves. Watching his side make so many mistakes. Completing this almost 70 minutes through the game. And here's the... It was Starling. Around the jaw. First contact there from Starling on Corbin Sims. He just put the arm up there, really. Wasn't swinging or anything, no force in it, but that's all that's needed, just the contact. 
He looked pretty composed, Tubes, for a side that's uh, barely completed 50% of their their sets. Um, We've seen much more the colour of the, the pink stripes on Newcastle's jumpers in the past in similar situations. A little breather here for everybody. Well, what the is Newcastle that? Knights can't find the kicking team. OK, we've got one now. No, that's not the right one. What is going on here tonight? That's not the one. The Newcastle trainer saying to the Manly Ball Boy, that's not our kicking tee. Where's the green one? The boys that's are saying, we haven't got it. That's the green one they're looking for. There it is. I think we found it eventually. A little bit on the far side of the field after the conversion attempt. Off the gag guy try about three or four minutes ago. Or it might be five or six minutes ago. After it's taken us a couple of minutes to find the tee here. Okay. Would never happen with a bucket of sand, would it? It never went missing. Should go back the to dirt. the sand. Got to go back to the sand. Jordan Chafowski and Pat Richards with a witch's hat full of sand about three foot off the ground. They were kicking them at one point there. And that got banned straight away. Those killjoys. Gidley, just to the left-hand side. He hits it across the face. That's a big miss by Kurt Gidley. The lead stays at 10, and Manly have possession 20 metres out from their own line. That was a poor strike, wasn't it? It was. Just tried to guide it through. That was Kurt Gidley kicking instead of Tyrone Roberts. Here is Cherry Evans. Backing under a tackle there of Rocco. Heading back out to the left-hand side. It's Cherry Evans' time, isn't it? Need some magic. The man who's produced so much for them over the last few seasons. Watmo playing it. Ballon. Back the 10. They were, according to the referees. Now little John puts it up. Uate standing underneath it, coming through. Tafua trying to swing it back infield. Might have missed it completely. Picked the ball up. And he might have another try. Onside, mate. We've got a try. Check for a touch and possible onside, mate. OK, well, that's what we're checking. We're, we're checking whether he touched the ball or not. He, he looked to be onside for mine, George Tafua. But whether he touched the ball originally... <laughs> they go down the short side. As long as the players have an overrun, as Jack Littlejohn, the man that puts the ball up, that's good. Maddow's onside. Tafua was well onside. Aimed at Uate again. He's been pretty good. It was that close to the sideline that Uate didn't really want to play at the footy. It was hard to see whether it... I think it hit something of Tafua's. Did it go down and hit his leg? Come off the foot of... Gagai. Dane Gagai, in fact. Well... When you slow it down, as we invariably do in these situations, on these touches on a ball in the air, it always looks like they missed the ball. And from that angle there, it does though he miss it. Well, he's completely missed it. That angle there confirms it. There's the ball bouncing off. George getting himself oh, back just in inside. the field of play in time and putting it down cleanly. He's given his side a chance. <laughs> wow. wow. We should have known George in the first half couldn't get within cooey of the ball. We should have known that he was going to miss that one too, and he did comfortably. Well, you got a good thing this time. Probably say the same thing about Aquila Uate. They've both had plenty of swings and misses tonight. Oh, you can understand Aquila, the ball, and he does a great job again to get it down. He's a master at it to Fua. And as he heads for the corner post and touching goal line, it will be a green light, but you can understand Aquila not wanting to play at that one. It was that close to the sideline. Uh, you know, a, a touch, six to go from Manly. You would, you would back yourself not playing the ball in that situation, but not giving up a try either. Remarkably, it comes off Gagai's foot and it's back in play. Now, Madai quickly taking the conversion attempt. It misses to the left-hand side. It stays a converted try at 
points to wait. Remembering that Kurt Gidley had the penalty goal attempt missed in the very next set. Manly go down the field and score time for the second time tonight through George Tafua. He has two. Billy Uwate has two, and George. Purple vein of form as far as try scoring. 18 tries in his past 17 games now for Manly. Scoring them here at Brookie as well. Nine in his past six. It's Ballon from dummy half. Works it away. Well, that's a couple of times he's tried to get the penalty. I think he saw the referee say Marcus, but we haven't given it. Good pass from Blockno. Basketball floater over the top to Hiku, who stays in the field of play just. And they had visions of taking him out for a moment there as Williams. He's a back here for Bura. Back into Newcastle territory. Last play. Is it bombs away again? You better believe it. Probably all won this one. Marmo coming across, can't get to it. It bounces up though to Darius Boyd. Might be looking for the spiral talk there. Barry Cherry Evans didn't strike it as he liked. It's an easy one in the end for Darius Boyd, but it could have bounced anywhere, I guess, as Mamo. Play it here, just inside his own foot. Seems the best option for both teams, doesn't it? Just put it up in the air and see if someone can make an error. Nice carry by Adam Cuthbertson, the player just outside the 44, the Knights. He's animated on this left hand side. He'll get a chance here to kick you to imagine on the last. There he is, not a great ball for him. Plenty on the kick. Williams going back with play at it. He's going to sit down by the look at the spin on the ball, and as a result, they trap Williams at his own 10, but he plays it quickly. Stewart gives it to the man of the moment, to Fua, running a long way as well. And was he stopped? Yes, he was. He thought it might have been play on. I guess these days it doesn't matter just bounce up and play on because they don't get penalised, they just say go back and play it. May as well take the punt and keep going. You can do all manner of things in attack these days when you've got it in your hands and mess it up and still get a chance to do it over again. Little John, Stewart, here's a play. It goes across to Manai, he gives it to George. Looking for three. Top to the ground there by Rocco. And he'll play it inside the Newcastle 20 on the last. Very slowly back to his feet. Cherry Evans, as a result, was under pressure. The kick is a good one. Hiku was there. They couldn't clean it up. Bura ends up with mate, it. I have a try. Just check for a possible tackle in midair, mate. It might be all tied up in a moment. Well, James McManus takes the ball and did a great job. Whether he was trying to pass it back to one of his own players because he thought he was going to be tackled in the in-goal area. As we have a look at the chasers, they're good. Jerry Evans is in front of the line. And you know, Hiku keeps his foot just behind the line. McManus, great leap, great take. No, he doesn't try and pass it. He just drops it. And the ball ends up in Bura's hands. They asked to have a look for a, a tackle in midair, but, well, Hiku's playing at the football. I think you can both play for the football. That was no tackle in midair for mine. And Jamie Bura scores a try. As we see the video referees spin up the green lights. The Sea Eagles are back. And a big kick coming up for Steve Matai. Just the right hand side of the uprights. Hasn't struck them well tonight, but this one is okay. It's 14 apiece. Off the try by Jamie Bura. Two tries in the space of four minutes. And again, you come back to that missed penalty goal by Kurt Gidley. It's been all manly since. It has. The kick has been... The one up in the air has proven to be gold tonight. 
Time nice out. little set play down the left-hand side to get them in position for that kick. Not many of their set plays have worked, but it was pretty slick down the left with Brett Stewart and Steve Maddow. Here's Starling to play it inside the 20. Stacks of time for this one to be decided in regulation time. Jason King playing it, comes away to Matt I. He intended the pass to go in that fashion to Jamie Bureau, but it worked out okay. Now Ballard getting out of dummy half. It's up 12 or 15 on the carry. This is play five, a slow play the ball. What? Simon's on his outside. Well tackled though by Willie Mason. Also Jared Mullen. This will be the last. Cherry Evans, they'll run it. Tom Simons puts the kick in. Not a bad one either. Darius Boyd cleans it up. Comes away to Mamo. Tries to get to the outside of Hiku. He runs to Williams. There might be a problem here because this kid can really run. Josh Starling, what an effort. The front rower on a flying winger with one of the tackles of the season. Well, what an effort it was from Starling. Mamo. We've seen him in the under 20s. We've seen him in first grade. Plenty of speed. If he gets around Josh Starling, there's trouble for Manly. He just didn't have enough room, Mamo. He had to straighten up eventually, and that allowed Starling, who never gave up. Darius Boyd gets a touch on the ball with his foot in touch. That's why it was pulled back. Huge effort. Really? Down here, mate. Really? Down here. If we go inside the five minute mark, Manly with another opportunity here. The scrum on the 40. Come back, fellas. Make I was in. reaching for the pen to write his name in the try scorers list. That's how quick he is. And that's how good an effort it was. Josh Starling to come across. That was James Graham like. A couple of his plays for the Bulldogs yesterday against the Warriors. Dramatic tackle. Now King. Do you go for the one right here? They're just outside the 20. With Bureau, Cherry Evans taking it to the line. They're up very quickly. Roberts and Rocco coming out to nab him. They did a good job as well. Slow play the ball as a result. King just punching it forward. Is this the play right here? It doesn't look like it. Cherry Evans on the right-hand side. The keeper going through the hands. Crash ball there for Bura. Oh, good enough to stop him. Here's the last. Cherry Evans. Nothing doing there as far as a field goal attempt. It wasn't a great set. The grubber easily taken by Darius Boyd. Perhaps they'd like that set of six over again. Well, they would, and they'd like the finish too. Cherry Evans under pressure. Force back on the inside. The kick end up going straight to Darius Boyd. Yeah, got fighting with Jason King and needs to be careful not to give away a penalty. Give the Knights a chance off the ensuing set for a field goal attempt of their own. McManus to play. Four gone inside their own 40. Rocco slipping over. It'll just be a clearing kick. I'll try and put some pressure on the Sea Eagles to make a mistake. Mullen just hoofs it down the field. Stewart will take it on the full. He's got the fool back there with him. We'll give George a chance. Now I was on the outside. And they bring it back. Some nifty work back beyond the Manly 30. Inside the final three minutes. Here's Simons. Good tackle by Mullen. Little John goes to Lawrence. Rocco with the first contact. Now stop him five on his own side of halfway. Midway through this set. Simons. You'd imagine if there's a field goal attempt coming up, it'll be a long range one at best. Watmo trying to take some cheap meters. But keep it alive. Boy, that was a chance taken there. Bura ended up with it. Ballon looking for his option. Cherry Evans is there. He wasn't thinking field goal, but little John was. He struck it low. It'll go dead as well. It'll be a zero tackle. That might be important. Yeah, generally you can see the teams in Newcastle have been very good coming out of their own end. Darius Boyd taking the tap. They just might get themselves 
in an attacking position and have a shot at field goal. Boy, it's screaming. Adam Bebchich, the pocket referee. No joy from him. McManus playing it for Billy. Here's Maceman. Bureau was up quickly. It's a good tackle by the lock forward. Roberts heads out to Cuthbertson. He keeps it alive. Mullen spins it to Houston. Now Gagai using some footwork. Well tackled though by Matai again. How many times have we said that tonight? Three gone. They're in range. Roberts back on the inside. Rocco found some space. Hiku stayed with him and so did Lawrence. There's a chance right now. Mullen ignores it though. Boyd wants a shot. He chips it towards the uprights. It's wide. Wow. It looked as though Mullen was there to snap one. Wait. But he always had it, had it in Come his on. mind that it was Boyd who was taking it. There was a bit of pressure from there when he got out. Jared Mullen could have kicked that at a pinch. He ended up throwing it to Darius Boyd, who probably had too much time to think about it. Will Manley get themselves in a position. 40 seconds left. Little John will reach back, to pick up the play, the ball, and we've got 30 seconds remaining. Here is Jerry Evans going to Stewart. It's a long way from range at the moment. Here's King. Lawrence will play it. Ballon comes across to Bura. He'll work it forward. Here's the last. It'll be a 40 metre plus attempt if they go for it. Jerry Evans, he hits it. He likes it. You are kidding. He loves it. Daily Jerry Evans. Who else? With the last play yep. of the game. Off one step from 40 metres out. Wins it for Manly. I'm surprised you even kicked it. I, I could not believe that. When they passed the ball from dummy half, as the ball was making its way to Jerry Evans, I thought, well, he's not in a position to kick that. He's too flat. There's too much pressure coming through. Off one step. Absolutely nailed it. And it has left the Newcastle Knights shattered on the ground. What an escape. What a get out of jail. What a kick from Jerry Evans. Watch it again. One step and you can't hit it any better than that. Wow, that went into the crowd. That's how good he struck that. As well he should feel like that and get swamped from his teammates. What a piece of play. Hasn't there been some field goal drama here at Brookvale this year? In round one, Cameron Smith, he broke the hearts of the Sea Eagles fans. And tonight, Daly Cherry Evans, he has crushed the Newcastle Knights with that effort on the last play of the game. They were trailing by 10 with 11 minutes to go and somehow found a way out of it. The Sea Eagles beat the Knights 15 points to 14. What an ending. There's so much to talk about in the Clive Churchill studio. We'll take you there right now. Here's Monday night with Matty Johns.